What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. This is I, Lady Nika, in with a review for Love and Hip Hop ATL. This is season four, I think episode five or six. I don't know, honey. Uh, check down in the description box. I have it up there for you then. But we're going to jump right on into this review because right after this upload, I'm going to do If Loving You Is Wrong. So, I'm trying to keep current on all my shit, child. So let me get my notes and stuff together. Then I told y'all I'm just as off as a busy bug without my cigarettes. Let me get everything I need. Hold on, y'all. I know you say she should have had that together, but okay. If it was a fifth, we'd all be drunk, but we ain't, so be all right. Okay. First of all, thank you to everyone who was supportive and show love to the, the Fresh Collective. Now that you all know who it is and what we're, you know, what our core purpose is, please, I, you know, I implore of you to please, you know, support us and anything that we have going on. Anything that's a TFC event or TFC is in any way um, associated with, you can believe that it's a positive thing. We we don't do anything but the positive. All right, so let's move on into this review. Now, y'all, yesterday when I was watching this shit or whatever day it was, I, I'm lost on, I think day two, okay, so yesterday I saw it. Um, I missed, all I remember was seeing Rashida and Carly Red having a conversation, and I'm assuming it was about what went down at that, um, when they came to her grand opening, and you know, all that getting turned up and turning shit over until the friend jumped stupid. I'm assuming that that's what they were arguing about, and Carly went on to tell her she wasn't no real friend because... You know, she didn't have a reason to come there and do that. And she don't know the backstory. The backstory is that she allegedly did call Erica. This is what I feel about the shit. You can't stop a hoe from making a hustle, okay? The only thing I can say is I may have... I don't know because she didn't say how many times she actually made contact with, you know, uh, Erica to try or at least tried to make contact with Erica. She didn't say how many times. She just said Erica didn't answer. Okay, it could have been some going on, reason why Erica wasn't able to answer her. And I don't know why Erica didn't call her back. I have no idea. I don't know how many times she actually... Uh, me, if it was me... And I'm trying to make coin and this bitch stalling. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to call you two or three times. I'm going to email you one time. And I'm going to send you two text messages. If I don't hear anything within at least a three to four day period, I'm going to assume that your ass don't want to do the job with me or you don't want to talk to me, which means if you don't want to talk to me, we can't do business. So I'm on to the next. Um, I, I'm not here for how crunk. Erica and Rashida got. And then my thing with Rashida is, while you turning up on her, you need to be over there hollering at your man who who overextending y'all funds, really, a.k.a. your funds. And he got money to splurge on bitches and splurge on $3,500 uh, apartments slash offices, you know, down in Buckhead, bitch. That's what you need to be worried about. I can understand you being concerned for Erica, but Erica, a grown ass woman, and it's something more to, to Erica's story than meets the eye. And I can assure you this if this was your situation, Erica wouldn't be all up in there like this. So, bitch, 10 to yours is what I'm saying. 10 to your one. Okay. All right. <laughs> We see a scene next with uh Stevie J and he dying there at the church. I guess this church is a, you know hooked on to a rehabilitation center because y'all know they always have them together. If you didn't know, I'm telling you they do. But anyway, he talking about me you know what he talking about the meeting that Jocelyn and Mimi had didn't go well. So he hoping to meet he finna meet up with Mimi and he hoped that you know. He can get her to understand the importance of getting along. Well, Mimi get there and she explaining how the meeting went, and Stevie J saying he gonna get he gonna have to get to uh talk to get Jocelyn to talk to the counselor that he has, um because he wants peace between the two of them. My thing is, you can't make peace with a bitch that don't want peace. Now Jocelyn ain't got no problem with Mimi, okay. She not worried about Mimi. Mimi more worried about her. And for as crunk as she try to make it seem like Jocelyn gets, I really don't, I'm not here for that. 
Jocelyn only pops off because y'all have been picking at her for months. And she told you. And once again, I don't understand. What's wrong with the world? If a mother... Let me t if I tell you, I'm going to beat your ass, take it to the bank. You can take that to the bank. Because I'm going to get that ass. Jocelyn the same way. She put up with the bullshit long as she was intending to. When she was through with it, she told him, I'm coming for your ass. And I'm snatching wigs. Nobody believed her. Now everybody want to act like she just such a monster. Now, I'm not saying the girl don't have skeletons or demons because we all have them. But don't try to make Jocelyn Demon out to be no bigger than anybody else's on this particular franchise. Because come on, bitch, are you serious? Anyway, that's what that bitch uh, Mimi, you know, she ain't with the program. Fuck her. Child, I can't waste too much on her. Anyway, we see... Nico, he meeting up with Margo. That's Margo with the G-A-U-X. And he has talked her into moving to ATL. So, you know, when I told you on episode one, he was telling her to move to ATL. She was like, I ain't got nobody. I know that. What? I mean, what I'm supposed to do? Well, apparently, I told you our bitch was moving. And she here. And he got her staying in the same damn apartment complex he in. As a matter of fact, uh, matter of fact two floors away from him. And he telling her about that book deal, and she just asked him, "Look, just just come clean and tell me everything that you know. Tell me everything that's in relation to Mimi, because I'm not understanding this shit. What's going on?" Okay, well, he she says she feel foolish because she don't know the exact involvement, and he asked her. Well, she asked him if the sex tape was leaked, and Nico finally told the truth, or at least he's saying that's his truth. According to Nico, Mimi being a mom, he didn't want her to take the flag, but they needed Cohen, okay? And by needing Cohen, they came up with the lie that the sex tape was leaked. You know, someone stole his baggage and all of that shit. Well, Nico, Nico saying ain't none of that. That wasn't none of that real. No one ever stole the the uh the video from him on a trip when they were on vacation. It was all thought of and masterminded by Mimi. That's what he's saying. But see, here's my thing. I don't believe Mimi did it all by herself. Bitch, you had just as much involvement as she did in this. So, I'm not here for that lie there. But I do believe Mimi knew and it was never no damn lost tape. They just leaked the fucking sex tape is what they did. Well, anyway. He's saying he took the rap for the sex tape because Mimi had a child. But she the culprit. And, uh... <sighs> she asked him, you know, okay, so she know about that, and then she know now that they planned it. And Margo wants him to tell her the full truth, but he said he's not going to tell her everything. But for right now, that's what she needs to know. Okay, so that, that's that's how this shit going. So now what he basically doing is now he ain't fucking Mimi no more and the wife he done showed up. He finna try to really dump on Mimi a whole lot. I don't have no sympathy because, once again, Mimi always doing something that I can take this kind of stuff if she was a younger girl. Like, what we dealt with Miss Strawberry over there on the Love and Hip Hop New York. Okay, we, we can account that this bitch is somewhere young, so she got a lot of growing to do. Mimi is a crusty ass old bitch around my age. And she's still making 20 year old girl uh fucking mistakes, and I'm just not here for that. Especially when you somebody mom, so bitch, fuck you. Whatever. Um, Cena comes by, uh, to see KD, because she's still, you know, feeling some kind of way by KD asking her to have proof of her and Jock's involvement, right? Well, she says she not really for it, but she gonna go on down there and see KD. And KD had a nice office building. Did y'all see that? Yeah, a nice little office. Look like little sugar. Sugar mama got something going for herself. She just need to stop paying for this. I don't know. Is that the thing that's going on in ATL? Somebody from ATL let me know. Because on every one of these shows, you got a bitch that's got it going on for herself. But she buying the dick. What you buying dick for? I'd rather buy an artificial dick than to buy a dick that talk back, though. I'm just going to be real with you because I don't need you to talk. But anyway, 
she go in there and she show uh she show KD that 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 video of her and Jock, you know, the toes and all that shit. Well, KD gets beside herself. She throw the computer down, stumps it, and tells Cena she a low life and she ain't getting Jock because they are together. And Cena said, uh, bitch, you crazy. You gonna be a side chick all your life. But if you wanna know the truth, they both side chicks. But, okay. They get into it. She leaves, okay? So then we gonna go on over there to Erica. And she had the lawyer about the child support. Apparently, her and Scrappy are to meet up with their prospective lawyers and try to hash this out to keep it from ever going to court. Well, when they when Scrappy and his lawyer get there, Scrappy's saying that Erica and he had an agreement that as long as Imani gets what she needs, they was cool. Well, um, Erica's saying that's not how it went. She took the enforcement part off of him, but she, you know, he still had to pay his child support. And... Erica saying that, you know, the way they arguing, y'all. They arguing between the two of them. And Erica jumps up and she's like, you know, she's, she's dumb because they not getting nowhere. And Scrapper told her, you damn right, you ain't getting nowhere. You better make sure that you ready for this type of war because, girl, I'm not here for this. And I'm going to tell y'all what I think about this. If you a man who has a child with a woman and you ain't together no more, I would advise seriously that... If you're not going to go on and state your own child support, because you men can do that. You can put your damn self on child support. But if you're not going to do that, start a paper trail. That means if you get this bitch a dollar, you need to give it to her in the form of a check or money order, okay? If you go buy that child in a clothes, you need to, you know, my advice, what I tell my son, when we, we do monthly money orders, and then if he buy anything, it's going to come off of my debit card. And we're going to keep the receipt. If anything needs to be taken back, I'm very good at keeping receipts and stuff of that nature. So if, if something don't fit or something need to go back, I got the receipt. I'll take you to take it back. But we're going to make sure that it's always a paper trail. So you can't never come back to my boy and say to him, you ain't doing what you supposed to be doing. Because we got everything aligned in black and white. We started a paper trail from the day the child was born to this current day. And he's two years old. So I'm, that's why I'm saying you, you got to start your paper trail. I don't understand men out there who have a desire to be a good parent. But y'all make stupid decisions like giving the bitch the money knowing that the me everybody ain't got good intentions like you do, okay? Some people just really, you know, like Mama D said last week, women lie, men lie, okay? So you never know. And in this particular situation, I honestly believe that Erica need the money. You know, she she wanted to go into the clothing thing. She started that class six shit with them four or five little old dresses that I swear it probably came from Charlotte Russe or H&M some damn way. I don't know. But that now he, in, he, he involved in this child support thing. We ain't heard nothing about no child support none last season. Y'all can tell that it's more to it than just child support. I personally think this some get back, you know. This some get back. She the baby mama and she scorned because he didn't want her. And we all know she tried to put him on blast at the damn reunion and it didn't work because he's still kicking it with the bams. So I don't think that that little girl goes without anything she needs. I think this is just Erica way of irritating him and trying to squeeze him for money so that she will have money to maybe start up her clothes and saying that she seems to want to do. I don't know what make her think that that's going to be successful for her, but okay then, whatever. But that's what I see it as. I don't think that he's delinquent and actually being a good father. I think that she did make the agreement with him. I'm not going to come at you by no child support. It's long as Amani get what she need and clearly by Instagram and the times we've seen her on this show this little girl is not wanting for anything this is nothing but a ploy on Erica's part to get some get back at Scrappy because she won no she better find a storyline and it better be believable because her days is numbered on this damn show and then I think it's because she kind of feeling some kind of way cause Scrappy ain't on her ass no more hmm Y'all crazy letting these hoes get y'all like that, but okay. Well, let's go on, on over to Katie and Jock House. And, and she's saying she wants to remind Jock of what he has, right, with her. She also tells, she also says she's, uh, 
she tell him she want to tie him up. Now, the freaking jock, and I can, I, I ain't mad at jock. I got a little, I mean, you know, I told you I like good throw up against the wall. So, I'm here for the little rough foreplay or whatever. So, when she come in there, you know, and she talking about tying him up and she got on Phaedra outfit from uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. You know, the, the, the. The, the neck thing that Phaedra had on. Well, you know that's the same thing KD came out that room with. Child, they both look like struggling whales, but we ain't going to talk about all that. She come over there, and um she tied him up, and he's so horny, he not even thinking that it might be something, you know, more to this because we just had this altercation at this goddamn um studio, and girls spilled tea on me, so KD might be feeling some kind of way, but he, you know, thinking with his dick. Because that's what he doing. He thinking what he did. He didn't pay it. He paid it dust and let her tie him up. And here she come in there with the Phaedra outfit on. You know, looking like a trap whale. And she got strawberries. And she asking him to do this look familiar to him. Well, he's sitting there yet not understanding that this is an ambush on a bitch. Okay? Now, he's so into getting pleased. He ain't thinking about... You told her these motherfucking ties that you she got tied you up with. I couldn't even do no motherfucking tie on my bed, though. Come think about it. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to see. I don't think I could. I see y'all see how it is. I don't think I could. I couldn't do no tie. I had to strangle nigga up like I don't know. But in the damn way, um. He ain't remember the fact that he told her that that shit was a little too tight and she ain't never come to fix that shit. He just caught up in the fact she got on the Phaedra Whale outfit with the strawberries and, and, and she, she twerking it like she mean it in front of him, getting all on him and making him feel some kind of way with her extra ass. But anyway, she showed him the video of that Sheena, that Sheena brought to her of him and her fucking, right? Now it's serious to him. Now he got the stupid look. He he looked just like a deer in headlights. Motherfucker just like, you know, that look there. He don't know what Katie gonna do. Plus, he, you know, he said the shit was a little tight on his arm. And she ain't give a damn. But he, t you know, he tries to tell her that Cena drugged him. Now, in her confessionals, even, even uh, KD wasn't stupid. She knew he hadn't been, you know, that girl ain't do shit to him. She didn't have to set him up for failure like that. He just a horn dog, and she know that her damn self. So she not hearing that shit well. She got his ass tied up like that child, and she say, and these are her words. She started to go die of a mad black woman on the nigga, but she decided to not take it to that extreme. So what she basically did was like pour a drink on him. Smush a little chocolate on him and left his ass there tied up. He thought she was playing, but she was adios. And she left his ass sitting up in there. You know, uh, she tells him to call her when he, when you know, he able to get free. And that she still love him. Now, what lesson was she supposed to be teaching him? Anybody. You know, as they said, the doors of the church are open. Could anybody get down in them panties and tell me what was that supposed to do to him? Is that supposed to make him know not cheat on you? Women kill me portraying themselves as nothing more than fucking sluts and easy prey for men. Come on. You got all these damn jobs. You a Phaedra Park type of bitch. And you mean to tell me you can't? See that this man is only here for what you can provide for him. He has no love here. And you locking him, knocking him up. You Well, I ain't going to say lock. By you tying him up and leaving him up in a, a an apartment, you know, tied up. What that supposed to do to him? It ain't going to do shit to him because the motherfucker said in his damn confessionals it turned him on. Even though he know he wrong and he shouldn't have done that to her, he was turned on by this. So, of course, you ain't do shit to make him learn a lesson not to cheat on you. All you did was, you know, make him want to yam you up real quick. You to let him go, he to put it on you, girl. But maybe that's what you looking for. I don't know, but whatever. Stupid bitch. Next, y'all, we see Stevie talking to his lawyer and... The lawyer telling him that an indictment has come down and that it's about that child support. He facing two years in jail. 
And as soon as he leaves the rehab, he needs to go directly to New York so that he can, you know, try to avoid being incarcerated. Incarcerated. And he tell him that he needs to, you know, have that discussion with his family and let him know, ooh, this piece of her. Working on my nerd. But, um, say he need to talk to his family about it. Well, y'all, we finally seen Kalina. And I've been wondering where Kalina was. Cause I like Kalina, you know. I don't have no problem with her. She look freakly, but she seemed like she a cool bitch. Well, we introduced back to her, and she on her way to have a baby, but her and her husband is having a conversation about him wanting to do a Kirk. He want to do the same thing, Kirk, take their last $70,000 and invest it in a fucking club, hoping on a miracle. You know, and she not really here for that, but she gone on, you know, she don't give him too much conversation on that because apparently she in labor. We see her again, she done had the baby, so, you know, and Carla Red come through there to try to, you know, cheer up because apparently she done been talking to him and told him that she was feeling some kind of postpartum way and she needed some company. So, here come Carla Red and she bring Jessica down piece over there to talk, you know, to meet Kalina and talk to her and shit, which may wind up being something good for, um... Jessica dying piece because Rashida was there and everything. No, nah, Rashida wasn't there. Mimi was there. Mimi ass was there. You know, Mimi got this bogus ass management firm and Jessica looking for management. So I don't know how this shit gonna work. But anyway, um, while she was there, uh, Mimi listening to Jessica t uh, saying that Jocelyn don't talk to her no more. You know, because she lets on that her and Jocelyn used to be cool back in the day and they ran the strip club. Of course, Mimi Dog is as peak listening to that shit because she want any kind of tea she can on Jocelyn. Sound like some hater raid to me, but you know, okay, whatever. Anyway, Mimi did what she do best. She little talking shit about Jocelyn and she telling Jessica that her and Stevie have a management company. And Kalina seemed like she's somewhat interested in uh, interested in Jessica too. I don't know if it's her big booty as she say, or she wants to do business with the girl. But any damn way, um, Carly tells the girls about what happened at the grand opening of her store, and Kalina says she gonna reserve her, you know, her thoughts on it until she talks to um, Rashida because Carly is Carly can be messy, and we all know that. But she gonna talk to Rashida first because that don't sound like nothing Rashida would do. And I'm like, bitch, I thought you said you and Rashida was friends. Why that don't sound like some shit, dude? Did you, you must, I know you went on season one, but did you forget season one? But anyway, all right. Next, we see Jocelyn and Stevie, and they meeting up with his counselor. And the counselor saying Stevie needs to separate himself from all bad habits. And if he can't do that for at least a year... He into you know for some he in for some rough roads ahead. Well, Stevie weirded out because Jocelyn is quiet. She normally saying something, but she ain't saying nothing. And when she does finally say something, she's saying she gonna stop drinking and any other things that she's involved in because she wants to be supportive of him. But she tells him it's hard for her sometimes to stick on the straight and narrow and do the right things because he disturbed her and have her in her feelings so bad. She went to cry and telling him that Stevie is very controlling. She said that on past episodes and past seasons that everything he do for her, she got to turn around and hear about it again. And that he constantly reminds her that she, you know, he's the one that's helping her out, not vice versa. When in actuality, I kind of think they do something for each other. But she tells him that, you know, it needs to not be all about him all the time. It needs to be about them. They need to work together. And she's telling Stevie that being controlling and being, you know, is not what's up. She wants to be treated with respect and as an equal. And y'all, at the end of this episode, Margot say she received a phone call for, uh, you know, she received a phone call. She finna go out and have drinks with a good friend of hers. And child, guess who walked up in the building? Guess who? Friends with Margot, Nico, ex-wife. Well, Nico's current wife. The Puerto Rican princess. Bitch, that's gonna be good. I don't give a fuck. Baby, when Miss Jocelyn stepped around that corner with them with them fur with that little fur on her shoes, I'm like, who the fuck is this bitch? Baby, she said slap down with Margot. So you know that's gonna be some shit. Now, Mimi always got Jocelyn name in her motherfucking mouth and she don't like her. Well, Jocelyn is friends with your ex boo daddy wife. The plot thickens, y'all. The plot thickens. 
Because I want to know what... Them bitches gonna wear you out on this season, and I'm gonna be all here for it. I can't stand Mimi, I swear. I can't respect a woman that acts like Mimi does. Mimi act like she has no motherfucking sense whatsoever. We all know she's still in love with Joc I mean, with uh Steven. And the only reason why she hate uh Jocelyn is because Jocelyn took her man. But you ain't she didn't take your man. He left you, girl. <laughs> he got tired of that dumb fool of fuck nigger trick for his rocks. Child, whatever. I can't wait till next week to see exactly how deep Miss Margot and Miss Jocelyn is to each other. And y'all know I'll be back, back down here to talk about it. But let me go on and get my crazy ass off this motherfucker and do the next video. Because I got to do it loving you is wrong right behind this. So guys, in the meantime, in between time, please like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend or two. Share my videos. Do what you do, baby. And I thank you to all of my new subscribers. I do see you guys. Like I said, I don't do individual shots because I don't want to fuck around and, and somebody subscribe. And I, I don't want to start no bad feelings between me and none of my, my subs. I call y'all my immediate, my uh, extended family. And that's how I feel about each and every one of y'all. But I do see the new people that have come. Um, if you talk to me in the comments, I promise you I'll talk you back. Talk to you back. I'm never a funny acting motherfucker. I'm just a down to earth woman with a story to tell. And thank you all for taking the time out to come and chill with me, talk to me, encourage me, inspire me, and be cool with me. Until the next video.